We have reached Trader Talk segment time, and today we're going to bring in Tech Trader Sean Udell. How are you today, Sean? I'm good. How how is J J J Jimmy Jimmy doing? <laughs> well, I'm do 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 doing well. <laughs> did did you catch my Jimmy Stewart there? Oh, is that what he does? No, nah, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I, I I missed it. Okay, before we get on to business, have you seen Infinity War? Conclusion, whatever it's called. No, I have not, so don't give me any spoilers. Oh, okay. No, I haven't seen it myself. I'm probably going to try to go this week because I fear if I don't go soon, I'm going to hear the whole the whole movie. But but I just want to say, this should be good as in anti-Star Wars fair. Well, thanks for joining um, us today. We'll talk next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All so right. so now now we can now now with that public service message to avoid any and all Star Wars movies after the third one um we we can you know resume your normal show All right well back to the normal show uh you buying this dip in the Nasdaq today No hell no um it, it's very long overdue it's probably not going to last as long as I want um I mean this this market has been literally uh, it's frankly one of the most amazing uh, persistence moves I've seen uh, that honestly I that I can recall. I mean, it's um, uh, especially with the highly valued stocks, but it's yeah, you know, it's not hurting me. I mean, I'm still I'm still operating. Uh, I still love the, the fact that I can trade what I want to trade, but it's just very it's been very very tough to make money on the short side. I mean, it's, I think I think that's probably the, the the biggest understatement that I can that I can probably come up with. Yeah, and I think that goes to one of our listeners wrote in today asking why there aren't any short calls today. Well, case in point, look at the look at the way the market's been today. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to see that these short trades just don't have a whole lot of legs to them. Uh, we had this little dip below, and I'm just looking at the S&P futures. We go from 35 basically to 26 that's nine points feels like a lot but that's nine points in the S&P we've already retraced that because you can't really have a whole lot of conviction on these short calls it's very it's been a very very strong trend to the upside and doing anything counter to that has been just very short-lived if you can get anything at all yeah I mean I'm, I'm going to keep shorting I'm going to keep having um having shorts against my longs i'm i'm going to keep you know i mean i have i have hit a couple well it, it seems though when you hit them well you, you almost have to have you almost have to time it like you really have to attack like a crazy up day after a series of up days and then you have to get lucky like you you have to catch you know, a lucky downgrade, or you have to cut. And now, again, it shouldn't be lucky. It should be like, look, you're doing good work, and you deserve, you know, you deserve to get paid. But the market doesn't really care what people deserve. You know, the market just dishes out what it dishes out, and it's up to us to react to it or preemptively position ourselves to it, which is which is what I do. But, but yeah, I mean, it's um, it, it's it's frankly, it's frankly, um, it, it's a little frustrating because because even even things I'd like to buy, like like. I don't know if you're going to ask me about Western Digital, but I'll just lead off. Like, I really want to buy more Western Digital. Uh, I, I reduced the position. I mean, I reduced it below this, below current prices, but it was a very, very huge short-term gain for me, uh, less than probably six to eight weeks, week position. I mean, a position I would you know, plan to hold longer, longer term. Um, but, I mean, I want to build this up basically down to kind of a placeholder level. I want to build it back up again. I really thought I could get maybe 40 four to 46 or lower on that quarter. Um, and the thing's only down a buck 14 now. I mean, it was, it was down a little more. What, what was the low of the day? Uh, I don't know, high 47s. Uh, I think after hours it was down uh, even more than that. But, but I mean, it, it didn't even sniff 45. Um, right. So, but, but again, that number, that print was bad, the guide was bad, and yeah, hey, it's a pretty easy call to say, look, in two quarters, they're probably going to start inflecting. But what if they don't ramp very fast? You know, what if, what if, um, you know, what if it, what if it's more of one of my kind of trades that takes, you know, multiple quarters for a big ramp to occur versus like you get a really good turn, a w really good one quarter turn that sticks. So, 
Yeah, there's a lot of optimism in this Micron chip sector broadly. Uh, again, there's only one real clean 5G chip name. I own it. I've been on it cheap. It's fulfilled hugely higher. Um, but there's a ton of stocks that have gone up on 5G hype that, that 5G might not even be 5% of their total revenue base. I mean, maybe it's 5, maybe it's 7, maybe it's 10. Um, but there are very, very few names that are highly exposed to, to 5G with a with, with the large percent of their revenue. Um, but, yeah, Western, like I say, I, I, I want to buy, I mean, I'm a preferred buy level of somewhere between 43 and 45. And um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get it. But, but if I don't get it, that means, well, I just acquiesce and, okay, I pay 49. No, I'm not going to pay 49. Um, at least not right now. I'm not going to pay 49. Um, I'll find, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll find other stuff to do. I'll find other stuff to buy or short. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it is a little frustrating because you get, you kind of, you, you get the setup where you're like, okay, look, I, I've got, I've got some, I've got some, uh, I've got some cash burn a hole in my pocket kind of waiting for this thing to get cheaper for me and it, it doesn't comply. Uh, and then on the short side too, you put some shorts on where you think very good prices, um, you know, and, and you can nail them. I mean, I, I thought I nailed my Octatrade, honestly. Like I literally thought I was going to make six, seven, eight, ten, maybe as many as 15 points in a few days. Eh, you know, it's, it's up 17 cents now. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's been, there was four points in it. Uh, I think within a day of me putting that on, by the way, um, I don't really want to take a four four point trade in a hundred dollar stock. It's four percent. It's not really my not really my cup of tea. So anyway, um, yeah, it's it, th things are pretty nutty. It's it, but like I say, this was one of the most persistent uptrends that we've had, especially kind of defying news. You know, the 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 the, the persistence of of frankly of stocks that that typically don't aren't producing the reports that garner optimism i think that's the difference it's just they're, they're big weights in, in the indices so they're going up as opposed to they're producing reports that are on a relative basis that are so superior you have to buy them that's that's the difference so you know in, in the days i was buying workday and now and splunk and data and CyberArk and okta and things like that they were producing reports that were so much better than everybody else um, and at pretty attractive prices. Uh, but, you know, now, you know, there's plenty of things kind of producing, you know, put this one, I'm not saying there's bad reports out of the high flyers, but there's lack of surprise. Um, you know, the, the, how much Microsoft went up on a quarter, again, that was, there was no surprise. Facebook, there was no surprise. So, I don't know, we'll see. I mean, it's, it's all going to come to pass. We're, we're going to end up having... Something similar happened to which happened last year. I just don't know when that's going to occur, but it's going to it's it's going to occur. Well, I would say one surprise might have been Google because they put in a print that was weaker than expected, and you don't typically see this for Google. We've got a little bit of a pullback here. I'm not sure if that's enough to entice you to get involved, but you have stated that of the Fang stocks, Google would be your favorite. So, with that said, are you enticed to get involved in this one? Mm, I, yeah, I mean, it, it still probably fundamentally is my favorite. I was saying those kind of thoughts at, near the end of last year and early this year. Um, it got down to 1,000. Uh, I kind of wanted 800 to 900 on it. Um, so it got close. I mean, I could I could have bought Google, but, but frankly, everything I bought did way better than Google did. So it, it didn't hurt me not buying it. In fact, I was better off not putting capital in Google, but putting capital in the things I put capital into. Um, I do things are very high quality, high quality long. It's relatively safe. Um, yeah, I mean, the, you know, Google, j just like sometimes they make too much out of a quarter and the stock goes up too much, it's probably going down a little too much on that. I mean, Google misses once in a while. I mean, Google is not like it's not like a Splunk, which literally I don't know if Splunk's ever missed a quarter in their in the company's history. I don't think they have. They might have missed a guide once or twice, but as far as I know, they never missed a quarter. Uh, that means they beat EPS and they beat. Uh oh, sounds like Tech T might have dropped off. But have no fear, we'll get him back on. Tech T, did you not charge your battery?
No, my battery's good. In fact, my phone's plugged in. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hey, I, I'm on the cell phone, although this is a Skype call, which should be using my Wi-Fi. So who knows? I mean, it's Skype. It's the Internet, man. But anyway, so so I don't know where I cut off, but Splunk never missed a quarter. Um, Google does miss quarters from time to time. So it, it's not really a big deal that they that they missed a quarter. Um, you know, I, but but it's it's like I say, it's kind of a... I guess I call it kind of a do nothing, a do nothing name. Like it just does, at the current price doesn't really excite me that much. I also don't think it's that dangerous. So uh, I think it'd be a bad short. I don't think there's much there on a short. Um, it's cheap. It's cheap relative. I'd much rather own Google than in a lot of the other names that people are glamoring over. All right. Well, let's talk about a name that you've held out for quite a while. That's Impinge, ticker PI. You had some questions today regarding where you would be thinking about getting out of this one. doesn't sound like you are in any hurry to get out of it. No. I, I, you know, I could swap it. I mean, I've, I've, I've been in a long time. I, it, it's finally not a losing position anymore. This is one I, I've, I've freely admitted that I bought too high. Um, I did buy this on the way down. I mean, I wasn't a buyer of it, you know, on the way up to 60. I bought it lower. Um, and, uh, you know, frankly, I probably should have been a little more aggressive at crazy prices on this. So cra I'd say crazy is anywhere for kind of 14 and below. Um, good quarter. I mean, good, good, good quarter. Th this has the feel of a stock that, that could keep going. It, th this has been a tough trader, though. I mean, I think they had a quarter... It was either a quarter before or two quarters ago where they had a really good quarter and they had no follow-through. In fact, I'm looking at a chart right now. They I, I, they hit 28. Uh, they had no follow-through. Um, but see, that was also right in front of the market meltdown. So, you know, this is a low liquidity stock. If, if the reason, I mean, I haven't sold a share of it. The, the reason that I kind of think there could be I, mean, I posted yesterday. I thought this could be a sleeper, sleeper print. Um, the, you know, it's basically just back to the those September October highs. Uh, I think September. So just back to the September highs. They had a good print then that was not rewarded. Um, again, market had meltdown. So so they they melted down with the market uh, to in an exacerbated fashion. So kind of feels like it could go higher. It, th this is a tough stock, though. This is a weird one, low liquidity. It could fade pretty easily. I'd, I'd probably be more interested, you know, if, if, they, if they hit it hard. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it looks like they're in an up cycle now. So, so as opposed to kind of how I describe Qualcomm, like I kind of felt like Qualcomm would enter a world where they were having their own up cycle in a semiconductor space in the midst of a down cycle. And impinge, impinge kind of is that same sort of setup. There's not many things going into kind of a quote-unquote fresh up cycle, especially in sort of semis, hardware, things like that. Um, so, you know, you could say, well, this is the first good quarter. This is the second out of the last three good quarters. When these guys typically have good quarters, they typically string off a few of them, a few being anywhere from, you know, three to five, maybe more. Um you know, their, their prior cycle probably got cut a little bit short. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, I'm pretty content to see it go higher. I'm a little surprised. That I, didn't, I didn't see some, some, uh, some research calls early today. Then I kind of dug a couple up here, I don't know, probably an hour ago. I'm a little surprised that the, sort of the lack of uh, what I call upside price target in enthusiasm. Um, you know, one guy raised it. I think the high guy went to 35, went from 30 to 35. Another guy went from like 20 to 32. I think those are the two high targets on the street, that, I, that at least that I've seen. Um, somebody asked me if I had a formal target. I really don't. Um, but, but, you know, I mean, I can back the napkin something easy enough. And, and you know, I looked at my matrix on this and uh, where I do a, a huge relative valuation ranking. And, I, I mean, I have them kind of 35 to 40 is kind of my, my price target range. And that's a very reasonable uh, out-year sales multiple. It's like, it's like four to five times. So, um, you know, if, if they keep kind of growing at this rate and they accelerate growth uh, further, um, this is pretty cheap. I mean, this, this is really cheap relative to, to stocks that people are willing to pay 30 times sales for. Um, so we'll just have to kind of, we'll have to see what happens. It's just kind of a wild trader. Uh, I'd like to see some, 
Well, the ideal thing would, would sort of just not see it not fade much for multiple days and sort of stick here and then, and then kind of burst above 2830. And that would probably be a go-go, a go-go setup. Um, hey, I don't talk about those a lot, but I trade them. I trade them well when, when I see them and when I like them. Um, you know, like say my more, more ideal setup, I mean, I, I just like to buy stuff cheaper. Something, you know, 24 to 26 uh, would be better for me. Um, but we'll see. I, it doesn't have that feel. I mean, usually when it fades, it fades by now. You know, usually when it, when when it when it when they're gonna hit it, when the algos are gonna raid it, um, they tend to raid the the, the the first the first buying thrust. So uh, yeah, it's holding pretty good. All right, so let's move into a quick little earnings preview, if you will, because I know you follow Apple, and I know it's gonna be a key read through for a lot of your names so what are you expecting and are you thinking about shorting this one into the print I'm, yeah i actually have some i have apple put spreads on right now um they're a modest loser they're, they're getting a little help a little help today um at one point i well this is about the price i put them on a couple days ago apple was 208 and i was like yeah should have just waited should have waited two or three days i could have put them on you know six to eight points higher um so yeah it's it's uh we'll just see again there's just so much i don't know is it going to be like wdc i mean you know might they not have a great quarter and and might not everybody not care um there's a lot of knots there but but to, to, to clean it up basically you know what what if they report bad and just don't drop <laughs> i mean that's kind of like but but are we to the point where now that's what everybody thinks See, that's the, these are the, the points I always try to I always try to you know put some money on the other side of the boat, meaning w w when everybody's basically quit shorting because it's been so hard to short and shorts don't work. At some point, that's when they work, you know. Um, so so it just it just seems like there's nobody in the world who's 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 thinking Apple's a short, and everybody in the world's thinking. Well, hey, even though it's two hundred dollars from from one fifty, it, it's still super cheap. B is cheap, and and um, so I don't know. I, I put it this way: the best I can say, I, I see absolutely no reason to buy Apple. That's the that's probably the best way I can put it. I just I, there's you know, I mean, I could rattle off fifteen names in, in instantly that I like better, and I could rattle off eighty names that are better relative values, and I could probably rattle off two hundred names that 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 uh, are are better relative values and just it just risk reward sets up better so I don't know it just doesn't it just doesn't look like a good risk reward long right now and sometimes that's that's the best that, that's the best time to to attack something on the short side I, I fully I fully expect that that this short will probably be like a couple other shorts and just not and not pay off I mean I did I hit smart really well I hit zscaler really well uh, MongoDB dropped a lot at one point, um, you know. So I mean, a lot of my shorts have worked. Last year, all my shorts worked. Um, so you know, but but wait, maybe the market just hasn't topped out. You know, that's the other thing. Sometimes you just the shorts are hard to make money on until the market rolls over and you get uh, at least somewhat of a sustainable correction. Uh, so until we get some kind of a sustainable correction, shorting is going to be hard. All right, let's get updates. But, but, but as far as the quarter, I think it's going to be basically in line, in line. Maybe it's a little miss here. Maybe it's a little miss on the guide. Uh, but I think it's going to be pretty close to in line. I, I don't, I don't, again, I don't think there's much surprise. The surprise is why have people been so excited to buy the stock from 170 to 200? I think that's, to me, that's the surprise. All right, let's get a couple of updates on some of the names that the listeners have questions on. The first one uh, it's not a name that I recall you mentioning. It, it's a uh, key site ticker K E Y S. No, that's yeah, that's I, I know the company. It's not one of my names. It's an old. It's one of the many Agilent spinouts. Um, uh, at one time or another, Avago, by the way, was an Agilent spinout. Agilent was a Hewlett Packard spinout. Um, yeah, it's it's been it's been. This is another one. It's kind of like a. I got I, I think I liked this years ago. Again, I know this is not just you know. Sometimes I don't I don't cover everything. Um, I did think this was cheap. Yeah, I, I remember this. I back in back in sixteen when the whole tech wreck 
there was actually a market crash, which nobody talks about. Nobody remembers that as a market crash, but we, we really had one. Um, late 15, early 16. This stock was, uh, on any metric, was just so gorgeous. Um, but it's, I mean, it's gone up huge. It's sort of like a Xilinx. There's, there's a lot of 5G love. Um, you know, it's certainly not cheap anymore. Um, but I don't know. I, I, you know, I tend to try to comment on things that I feel like I have, you know, essentially expert level sort of analysis on. Or at least, I, hey, I feel I know them as well as anybody else. I, I, I don't really know this name. I mean, I can look at the valuation. I can look at, uh, I can look at how much the stock has moved. I know why it's gone up. I know what's driving it. But it's not, uh, I, I don't have it. Like, it, I don't model it. I model lots of stocks. I, I, don't, I don't have a model on, on Keysight. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, you know, maybe I should start looking at it, though. Uh, some of the readers have pointed me some, some pretty interesting stocks in the past. Um, and, and maybe, this, uh, maybe this sets up pretty well. Maybe, maybe this could be like the next NVIDIA or FANG type short or over, overhyped 5G type name. Um, so yeah, I might, I might kind of add it and do some work on it. I don't, I don't really know it very much be beyond sort of the hype that's driven it to current prices. All right. And so that was the question, whether it was a good 5G name. So you think it may be in the category of an overhyped 5G name? I think it could be, but it could be, it could be, you know, a very good 5G name. I mean, here, here's what I would look at. I would say, okay, how much discrete revenue do they have that's, that's actually driven by real 5G? Not just hype 5G, but but like what percent of their business is actually 5G related, fiber optic related, things like that, um, you know. And, and I'd look at something like that as opposed to kind of going off some somebody's report saying, you know, the typical the typical upgrade or price target hike is well, uh, you know, I'm going to put the price target at 100 because my last one stock's higher now. So, you know, uh, I, I raise my price targets on things when I have a fundamental reason to do so, not just because the price goes higher. So, um, you know, what, what you just have to kind of look, look through the, uh, you know, l look at stuff with, with basically an unbiased eye, I guess. Um, but, I, I mean, I've kind of been looking at it as we've been talking. It just doesn't, again, I mean, hey, uh, yeah, yes, Qualcomm's had a big move. It's 80, 87. It's not 50s anymore. Qualcomm's cheaper than this thing. So, so uh, you know, Qualcomm's going to do 650 to eight dollars in EPS. Um, I don't. I don't think this guy's going to do 650 to eight dollars in EPS in the next couple of years. Uh, revenue growth rate. I'm looking at sub 10 percent. Um, most names I'm long looking at growth rates anywhere from 15 to 50 percent. So yeah, that doesn't look that exciting to me. And as far as your overall uh, price target for Qualcomm, where are you thinking? Uh, well, I'm going to have a new uh, focus list update. My new price target in Qualcomm is going to be 133. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet. Um, so yeah, but that's my my new price target, and basically it's 100% driven by the fact that they finally got paid by Apple and they're going to get paid by a lot of other people. And the, on, the only lingering risk is there's still an FTC decision. But I kind of think that is largely muted at this point because agreements have been signed, deals have been brokered. Um, again, I, don't, I can't prove this, but I think in large part that decision was, was steered or, or cajoled or brought by Apple to a large degree. So, I mean, Apple's essentially backed out of it, so I don't know how much impetus. Again, I just don't, I just don't know why a U.S. entity would neuter a leading R&D maker in one of the most important technologies going forward, which would aid foreign competition. It just doesn't, the, the whole thing just smells bad to me. I've, I, I think I've been pretty consistent in that view. Uh, but I know I, even, even a shockingly bad FTC decision at this point, I think, is... Uh, I think its effectiveness or importance now uh, is greatly reduced given the, given the deals that have been have been put in place. So, um, but yeah, I mean, Qualcomm is like I say, you know, that's gonna uh, the deal alone. They said adds two dollars of EPS. I think that's pretty sandy. I think I think now all the 5G growth can come through. I think it also opens the door for a lot more uh, IP deals. So it, there's going to be a lot more than a $2 EPS boost, put it that way. 
So yeah, so 133 is basically where I am on on Qualcomm now, and it's pretty much just recalibrated for higher revenues and higher sales and how cheap the stock uh, how cheap the stock already was. All right, updated price target for Twitter. Um, same thing on my new on my new uh, focus list. It's gonna be prob gonna be around 58. Uh, I've been 51 on it for a long, long time. Uh, 44, then 51. Now it's 58. Um, and and you know, I I actually still think that's pretty conservative. Actually, on on Twitter, I I always felt I always felt pretty much all my Twitter targets were conservative. I think this is pretty conservative too. Um, I, I think Twitter's Twitter's growth, uh, the durability of their growth, I think is 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 underappreciated. And nobody understands the uh, well. Maybe a few people do, but very few people understand the the reach, the Twitter reach. And the, the, I mean, again, it was just incredulous to me that the first question uh, on on their last conference call, the first question out of Q and A, was actually on MAUs. I mean, that's just if you're asking a question about MAUs, you know, you just don't understand the company, especially when Twitter's publicly stated that MA the MAU metrics going away. So. Um, but but MAUs again. I, I think we talked about this. I, I actually kind of wish Twitter had not done that because I think once the purge is done, I well I don't think this. Once the purge is done, the MAU number could be explosive. So you know MAUs have been flat to growing slightly, and I, I don't even know how many tens of millions of accounts they've purged. So so our our actual MAUs net of purging would they have actually be closer to 400 million now? I think they would be. And I think if you, you if you get a Twitter, if people are still want to look at that metric, you know, if you get a Twitter that's that's 400 million MAUs going to 600 million MAUs, you know, even if somebody's you know, uh, you know, ignorant enough to 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 not even think about the total reach of Twitter's platform, um, you just have to value Twitter massively differently on MAU numbers that much higher. So I, I'm actually a little disappointed. You know me. Hey, I was disappointed Finisar got bought out for the price they did. You know, there's plenty of things that disappoint me with companies that own. That doesn't mean I don't own them. doesn't mean I'm not going to own their acquiring company. But, hey, I, 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 my, view, my view on Twitter is like, look, the time to get rid of MAUs was sort of at IPO um, or shortly, after, shortly thereafter. If you stuck with them this long and, and, and they have a high chance that they're going to turn, and start inflecting the other way once the once the account purge is done. My view is you probably leave it alone. But anyway, they did what they did. MAUs are going away. It's DAUs now, and so on and so forth. But yeah, um, yeah, 58. I think I think that's relatively conservative. I think it's a good one two year target. Um, I mean, it hit it hit my 44 target a long time ago. Uh, hasn't hit my 51 target yet. But you know, um, you know, I, I put I put what what put something out there what, that I believe is attainable based on valuation, and that's, that's kind of where I am right now. Um, and we'll see. You know, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people that believe that Trump has helped Twitter. I don't. I, I, don't, I don't think there's much of a, uh, a Trump bump in Twitter stock price. I think the next election cycle, you, you actually could see a fair amount of hype. I mean, put it this way. Twi Twitter hasn't traded as a hype stock since the first six weeks it traded. So there's plenty of stocks that have traded as hype growth stocks in the last since Twitter's Twitter IPO. Um, Twitter has never traded as as a hype growth play or a hype valuation play or a, a story stock. It just never has. And so, well, it, it it actually did to the to the to the reverse. I would say at lows it was trading as a hype fear play, um, but it's never really traded again. It, it, the the, the all time high on Twitter was very much of a hype post IPO. Hype trade. Since then, hasn't it's been very rational? And um, but I do think next election cycle, you could you could see some some let's say over exuberance and hype um, about Twitter's power in the political arena because it's it's damn powerful. And I, I think that you know if you're a politician, you want to win, you want to get reach, you want and you want to put your voice out, it, you pretty much have to be on the platform. Um, and you have to be active on the platform. So we'll see. I think I think this election could look a lot different than the last election. All right. What's your takeaway on MTSI? This one's been kind of a dog lately. 
Well, they missed, um, and I've you know I've stated numerous times uh, as of the, the the prior earnings call. This is a company that needs a China deal. They do a lot of business in China. Um, without a China deal, um, you know their their numbers aren't going to be very good. I mean, they're missing. I don't know. I'm just I'm just guesstimating. They're probably missing 15 to 20 percent of their total revenues right now. And maybe more, maybe more, because we don't have a China deal. So I, I really like it. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep chipping away at the name. Um, I mean, I, you know, the other thing too. I think sometimes people think that okay, a lot of these other things are working. Oh, it's so, it's, it's so disappointing that this this one odd name or this what the couple names aren't working. I have a totally different view. Uh, if I have a lot of things that have gone up. I really want one or two names I really like to be low, so I have some place to to swap money into or to buy. Um, you know, I, it's sort of like real, you know, real estate. What people did years ago, you know, they, they had they had a bunch of equity, so they, they swapped into a house at a higher price, and and then when when everything hit the fan, they they lost all their equity plus even more, right? Um, so, you know, I, I'm not going to swap, uh, you know, a stock that's a highly appreciated stock for something equally highly appreciated. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to swap into it. I mean, hey, I just did it the other day. I swapped Pinterest for Stone Company, Stein, S-T-N-E. Um, and and it, it, it definitely took the sting off selling Pinterest too early because Pinterest went – I mean, I – you know that was a that was awesome. It was a great trade. Loved loved, loved it. Got caught it cheap. Made made good money on it. And then and then it proceeded to go up four to five points almost instantly after I sold it. Well, you know I'm up three plus on Stein, so a dollar for dollar position. So so that so I caught at least a pre a pretty good chunk. And now now Pinterest is going back down anyway. Um, but yeah, so I wanna I wanna swap dollars and swap things into stuff I feel is as equally undervalued as whatever the name was I was buying that I'm now selling for gains. So I like the fact that MTSI is 14. And I kind of have a full position in it. I could make it overweighted. I don't know. Maybe I'll make it overweighted and, and, um, and get a bigger position than I originally planned. I, I'm, I'm completely comfortable doing that. Uh, and if I, if I buy more, I'll post that I'm buying more. I'm, I'm, you know, again, I'm not too worried about it. You know, stock this down two, three points from costs doesn't, uh, it almost doesn't really even register on my emotional radar. Um, so, yeah, no, that, that one is a nice one. I mean, Cloud Dairy kind of said the same thing about, again, I like the fact that Cloud Dairy is cheap. It gives me a, it gives me a place to, 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 put, to put some stuff. If I want to sell something and buy something else, I got, I got a name I really like that's selling cheap. Uh, Baidu would be another one. Baidu is probably my favorite of all, of all my new names and all the things I think that that could be just a home run that is a large cap stock that can garner a ton of institutional buying that can trade a much higher market cap um, that's fundamentally very cheap so that's you know I'm not I'm not gonna make Cloudera and MTSI and smaller names like that as big as as big as names like you know Twitter and Baidu and and Spotify and and um, and the one we were just talking on Qualcomm, but um, but yeah, no. I mean, like I say, I, I like I like having targets that that you know are doing something opposite uh, of the market. I'm I'm kind of looking at Critio today. You know, I, I should have bought Critio. You you actually made a better call on Critio than I did. You were like, well, hey, why why not buy it here at eighteen nineteen? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Don't don't really want to. want I'm gonna watch a trade. Well, hey, and it, it never it didn't consolidate. It, it it popped pretty aggressively from the prior low. It, it, it's not even really retesting that, that prior low, but that's kind of on my radar as a possible long. Um, I think that's a very undervalued stock. The problem is there's not uh, – it's hard to find a point at which the numbers are going to turn aggressively. Um, with other names I've been on, you know, Micron previously, Western Dig, Chip Names, thing, it's, it's, it's Fiber Optics. It's, e it's, it's, it's easy to hold, grab onto a cycle. You know, I kind of need Curtio just to get better at managing the, you know, the algorithm changes by the companies that they work with, right? Uh, you know, you kind of don't want a company to, to, to drop 20 to 30 percent every time Google makes an algorithm change. Um, so, but, but that, there's a lot of value there. And, and again, I kind of feel like that name is a good diversification name, possibly. It's got correction slash crash protection if we were to have a big correction. I doubt it would drop a lot more from here. Um, 
So I don't know. That, that that's a name of possible interest that that I have um, without droning on too long about too many things. All right, a couple of updates on shorts, and I don't know if you're currently short these ones, but at some point you were. Uh, we'll start with Paycom, P-A-Y-C. You still short this one? You, you know, I'm not, but I but here here's a, I'm I'm actually I saw that uh, this morning. I'm going to respond to it too in writing. I, I'm kind of I mean, Octa's just not doing much. I kind of thought it would move more. Uh, they don't report for a while. I, I, I might basically swap my Okta into Paycom and get short Paycom. There, there are going to report, so I don't, I don't want to go too crazy on it. Maybe I'll do put spreads. But if I remember right, I, I can't, I'm trying to remember Pay. I think Paycom literally within like three days of my short, I think it dropped like 10 to 15 bucks. So I think, I think it went from the 180s to the 160s on, on, on like a kind of a group trade. So if I remember, I think that worked pretty good. Um, and uh, I can't remember, too. I, might, I can't remember. Honestly, I can't remember if I had common or put spreads or, or both. Um, but that did. I remember that had a big drop really quickly. Um, but, but what's interesting, it's a higher price now. I want to say that was around 182 or 180 or 184 where I shorted it before. Uh, it's, it's notably higher now. It's almost 200. Um, and there again, you know, how, how good of a report do they need? At the same time, I look at ServiceNow's report, which again, it, re, hey, very good report. But, but there's no surprise. I mean, who doesn't know ServiceNow is going to beat and raise? <laughs> so, so there's no surprise. So it's, it's just amazing to me you keep getting these gaps higher when there's no surprise. Um, and, and somebody say, well, you know, the magnitude of the beat. Well, okay, the magnitude of the beat's already largely, in, you know, reflected in the massively higher valuation. So again, it's all explained. We're just waiting for uh, the turn, basically. But no, I, I think Paycom sets up pretty well. I'll probably take like a partial. Uh, a, a better short might be if they, um, it, you know, if they do, if they pull a, a now, if they have a good report. And they gap up another. What's now? Now is about ten percent higher than they were. Yeah. So a ten percent gap higher would even be a better shorting opportunity. Um, that one's pretty stretched. They, you know, they tend not. The beats tend not to be as big from them. Um, so you know, yeah, I'm a little more interested. And that, that's a good question. Like I say, if if I'm not if I, if I'm not short a partial preprint, it's definitely going to be a name I'm looking to the day literally the day after they they report. Uh, but right now, uh, I haven't done the trade yet. But but uh, you know, I'm kind of thinking of of swapping, uh, of swapping my you know, Octa's basically break even. Kind of thinking of swapping that into Paycom. All right, and the other one that. By the way, I just looked and it did go into the 160s after uh, after that call. It, it very quickly went into the 160s um, on the chart. Well, that's good. Or on the price of Paycom. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's good. Um, so uh, MongoDB is the next one. Somebody wants to know if you're still short. Still MGB. short? No, nah, that's not that's not put spreads. That's common. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I you know like we'll say I don't don't want to you know don't want to get too uh, too you know what's the word? Uh, I, I I don't have the same conviction per on a name by name basis on shorts as I do on longs. Um, but I think it's fair to say that I do have high conviction that I will remain short, which is why I'm kind of putting in a lot of notes. Basically, I'm going to short and stay short of, of a basket of cloud names. And it's, it's fine. Like, say, tw Twitter just went up huge. Um, you know, Qualcomm just went up huge. Plenty of, plenty of winners. So, you know, I, I kind of feel like I have to have some... Um, some hedges. I mean, I just uh, given where the market is, given how high the Nasdaq is, given that sentiment remains high, you know, it, it, it didn't take much for the last, uh, you know, the last jag lower where, you know, in a two-day period, Mongo went from you know 150 or 148 to 120 low 120s. Um, we're still in the same world. We're still in the same world that that happened, and. Um, on those kind of days, it's awfully nice to have shorts. And I'll, you know, I, if if these result in some in some long term losses or some intermediate term losses against my longs, that's fine. Does, doesn't bother me. But but I, you know, I stress that because if 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 you're net if you're net flat with a bunch of cash, and and, and you know, you're saying, oh hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna short, 
and, and, you, and you're shorting against, the, uh, against a book of zero longs, it's a much different position to short than if you're shorting against the, a book of longs that are doing well. So, you know, I have a lot of cover for these, put it that way. I have a lot of cover, a lot of cushion. All right, and this will be the last listener question. I apologize for anybody who didn't get theirs in, but this one is regarding Cloudera. And the question is, this is uh, talking about the bear case of Cloudera, and uh, this, uh, this listener states, bears on CLDR say that the database technology is now outdated. They say customers can get databases from Amazon and Microsoft simply by clicking a button without all the infrastructure costs of CLDR setup. Uh, this person is long CLDR, along with you, and is wondering what you think about this bear thesis. Well, I don't know. First of all, I don't, I don't know if there's actually any factual relevance to that thesis because I believe when you're clicking on – so if you're clicking on the low-cost Amazon Web Service or Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud, uh, again, if you're clicking on the cheap open-source database solution, pretty sure you're clicking on Cloudflare Solution. So, so that, 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 that would literally actually be the opposite – of the bear case. So, I mean, this is not uncommon. A lot of times a bear case is written because its stock is in the lower right-hand part of the chart instead of the upper right part of the chart. So, you know, they kind of fit, uh, they fit uh, words to, to, uh, to, to meet the price. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's any, actually, I mean, I, I, it's, I'm having a hard time not laughing uproariously at that because I, I actually think that they don't, they don't understand that at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're basically talking about open source solutions on public clouds. So, you know, that's kind of their bailiwick. Um, and they're gaining a lot of share in it. Uh, so, you know, I don't, I, this, this is very common. I think Cloudera uh, is, is kind of misunderstood right now and has been. The, the stock is probably down much more just as a merger, sort of a post-merger, sort of arbitrage play than on fundamental results. I would just point to look at, you know, you can go and look at the last three, four quarters of Cloudera's results and Hortonworks results. If you think of those results are poor, you shouldn't be long the stock. I think the results are very good. So, so and I actually, I, you know, and well, well, they'll have to prove this out, but, but once you get past sort of the merger digestion, which they're already one quarter, one quarter, two quarters into it now. Um, last quarter was the first report as a post post merged entity, and frankly, it wasn't that bad. It was it was that the the revenue numbers were really actually better than I thought they were going to be. Um, but I think it's it's up to Cloud Derrick now to prove the durability and that 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 revenue growth is is consistent and maybe even picks up, maybe even picks up post merger. So uh, we'll see. I, I just I just don't worry about um, about stocks when they're when they're this cheap. My my biggest concern probably is that just it just stays tainted. Um, I don't even know if it's that tainted of the name. I mean, it's it's um, you know, I mean, it was it, it, it just got it, it just got hit hard post merger. Um, that that was a very popular trade uh, last year. Anything that was merging got hit very hard, and uh, so we'll just have to see what happens. But it, it stock this cheap, I, I just don't have. Um, I really just don't have much fundamental concern about it. Uh, my only concern would be you know getting too a bullion on it, getting too big in it. And, and then and then just having opportunity cost, you know, and instead of being able to hit pins and, and you know, a variety of these other trades um, that I hit. And by the way, next time we're on, I think I counted up. And again, I, you know, I don't post all my trades. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm a I'm a paid contributor for briefing. I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not full time briefing, I think, as most people know. Um, so, so briefing gets a, gets a, gets a, you know, a decent, a decent dose of my work. It's certainly not all of it, but I, I counted up something like just the trade. I think the just closed trades I've done year to date and it's somewhere between 26 and 35 trades. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't even know if I've closed the losing trade out of those trades. So, um, again, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to get too big in any one name just because I think it's so cheap. It's awesome because that would prevent, preclude me from doing lots of trades. Um, you know, whether it's a pins, whether it's a pie, whether it's a DY, whether it's a Twitter on and on and on, whether it's a Vicor, 
Uh, by the way, I was kind of hoping somebody would ask me about Vicor. That's a pretty exciting story right now. But anyway, the you know, so that's the one thing I just make sure I manage myself. I manage that as excited as something if I just think it has awesome long-term returns. I still don't want to get so big in it that I miss out. By the way, I've done, I've made that mistake. I had, I had a very long position. I had like an 18-month period where I had a huge position in Google. Again, it ended up working fine. But when you try to, when you're living on trading gains, uh, I had a very lean 12 to 18 months. This was a number of years ago. But again, I had a huge position in Google, and Google just didn't do much. It just, it, it didn't hurt me. <laughs> but but they kept producing these 27, 33, 36 percent growth quarters, and stock didn't move. That that was a period where Apple was super strong, by the way. Um, and the Google ended up coming very good and and did very very well. But Eh, I kind of learned my lesson. Uh, I learned my lesson. You get way too big in, in a name because you think it's dirt cheap. And, you know, I, I, I don't even know how many trades I missed over that 18-month period because I was sitting on this huge Google position. And, again, ended up working out, but it was, it was not very fun. So, so I, just, I just don't get myself into that position anymore. I make sure I have plenty of ample trading liquidity to, to do pretty much whatever trades I intend to do. All right. Well, but but that is my sole concern on cloud air. My sole concern would be more of an opportunity cost than than uh, a loss situation. All right. So we'll wrap it up at that point. Uh, we do have a whole lot of earnings that you have on deck coming this week, uh, starting with Apple. But you got a lot of big names that are reporting uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So we have a lot to catch up on next week. So. Why don't we pause there and pick things back up then? Let's do it. Um, it's been very good, very good quarter. Uh, let's keep it going. All right, my man. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and we will reconvene same time next week. Thanks a lot. All right, later. Okay.